Hey, welcome back crypto family. So you're probably wondering what's going on in the market. Why is everything declining? Is this the end of cryptocurrency? Is this the end of Bitcoin? Should I sell? Should I hold? Should I buy? So we're going to go over all that and the main things that have been causing this dip and actually uh, one of the big news headlines that caused it today and why there's no reason to panic. So looking at everything we can see market caps 422 billion the lowest it's been in a couple of months. Uh, we have Bitcoin, you know, at 8,700, Ethereum at 964, Ripple at 86 cents, Bitcoin Cash at 1170, Cardano at 36 cents, Litecoin at 135. Uh, so a lot of these coins, you know, double digit losses and uh, the lowest they've been in a couple of months. But uh, don't forget, you know, a lot of these coins are still up from where they were in November. So um, the parabolic rise we had in December kind of skews uh, these prices right here. But um, just keep that in mind. I mean, a lot of them are still, you know, holding a lot of gains from that. But going over why everything is down. Well, one article came out today and it was by Reuters and it was talking about um, basically India clamping down on investors about cryptocurrencies. And it made it seem like India is going to ban cryptocurrencies, which, as always, they misinterpreted the news and they're spreading FUD. So what they do here is they quoted one of the articles um, for India and it says the Indian finance minister said his government would take all measures to remove crypto assets and financing illegitimate activities or as part of the payment system, Aran Jaitley told Parliament. So they took this small, small uh, quote here that they had at this event and made it sound like they were going to ban cryptocurrencies in general which here you can see it says financing illegitimate activities. So I'll go over actually this other article that came out that um, really uh, reviews this and um, shows you that India is not banning cryptocurrencies. They're just focusing on regulating it and cracking down on illegitimate activities. So you can see here it says Bitcoin prices drop as media misinterprets government's regulation speech. So there's a speech today, um, you know, in parliament and you can see here that um, basically after Jaitley noted in his speech that cryptocurrency is not legal tender in the country and promised to crack down on illegitimate activities involving crypto, a flood of misinterpreted comments warning of an outright ban appeared across the mainstream press and social media. So this is something that we've seen time and time again. Um, you know, same with the China FUD, the South Korea FUD, all that. They just immediately skew the headlines um, just because they want to be, you know, the top article read or they want to get noticed um, the fastest. So we can see here that, um, you know, it basically quotes the same thing. The government does not recognize cryptocurrency as legal tender or coin and will take all measures to limit the use of these crypto assets and financing illegitimate activities or as part of the parliament system or as part of the payment system, sorry. So we can see here that um, the full quote that the media only took a small portion, the full quote says, Distributed ledger system or blockchain technology allows organization of any chain of records or transactions without the need of intermediaries. The government does not consider cryptocurrencies legal tender or coin and will take all measures to eliminate use of these crypto assets in financing illegitimate activities or as part of the payment system. Then this last part is actually really important. The government will explore use of blockchain technology proactively for ushering in digital economy. So they made sure to leave that part out because they didn't want, I guess they didn't want positive news spreading about uh, cryptocurrencies. But you can see here that um, that on the most recent Twitter activity, they announced you know, it's business as usual. So there's no change in the government stance with respect to cryptocurrency. So this is from uh, Unicoin, um, one of the, one of the um, cryptocurrency companies in India. And... It uh, basically says, also, Cointelegraph correspondent Joseph Young, uh, many of y'all probably heard of him, he also posted on his personal Twitter about the FUD and mainstream media surrounding the finance minister's comments. So it says, Joseph said, in what universe does this look, look like a ban? Indian finance minister said it will eliminate usage of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin in criminal use cases, um, unquote. He says mainstream media took it as it will eliminate usage of cryptocurrencies and forgot the rest. So again, you know, that's not, um, this isn't anything to panic about. You know, the government is still saying they're going to explore the use of blockchain technology proactively uh, for ushering in the digital economy. So um, he's still for it. And, you know, our, 
Arun Jatli, the finance minister of India, um, he still likes cryptocurrencies. They're just cracking down on illegitimate activities. So I just want to, you know, let everyone know that hey, everything's okay. Um, and even with you know Bitcoin coming down to where it is at eighty seven hundred, um, there's a lot of people who've been calling for this drop as well as I know uh, Tone Vays. He's a popular um, uh, Bitcoin. He talks about Bitcoin a lot. He's a popular figure, and he was calling for a seventy five hundred dollar Bitcoin. So. You know, this kind of this wasn't really a surprise to a lot of people who were in the know. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and it's still, you know, I mean, this shaking out the weak hands right now, and um, and then we'll, you know, come back up on a steady rally. So one more thing of news is uh, BitConnect, and as you know, there's been you know a couple lawsuits filed against them, and just recently the U.S. court froze BitConnect assets as lawsuits lawsuits mount. So a uh, the U.S. announced a temporary restraining order. Freezing BitConnect's assets has been granted in the U.S. after a second lawsuit was filed against cryptocurrency exchange and lending platform on Monday. So um, basically, they said that uh, basically they're freezing BitConnect's assets to um, you know save any chance that the defendants have of getting their funds back. And it says here it says uh, the defendants have 10 days to comply with the order. In addition to disclosures. Um, they are BitConnect prohibited from transferring any assets they may possess until they are granted permission by the court according to the temporary restraining order. So um, if this is going to be successful or not, who knows? I mean, I don't think this will have much effect. You know, it's kind of hard to control, um, you know, exactly uh, BitConnect's assets. So, um, you know, for the parties involved, you know, I ho hope they win it. But again, it's very, very small chance. But um yeah, it looks like you know more people are coming out against BitConnect, and it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens with this uh, moving forward. So, and then uh, one more article uh, regarding uh, the Bitcoin to price decline. Um, basically, it's just been talking about a lot of the FUD that's been coming. It seems like back to back to back. And you know, I was mentioning you know the Tether FUD, and then it was mentioning uh, the Facebook you know banning um, cryptocurrency ads, and then uh, of course you know what just happened recently with India, but. Um, historically, you know, it says, you know, we're still on a good rally and I just want to talk about exactly, you know, the FUD that's been being spread and it seems like a lot of these are coordinated attacks because it's just one after another, after another, after another. So a lot of people don't want cryptocurrencies to, um, you know, excel. You know, I know a lot of banks are against them, um, because cryptocurrencies provide cheaper transactions, they're faster and, um, just overall, you know, better security and, you know, banks are the first ones to lose money with that. So it's uh, kind of like, you know, uh, decentralizing everything. Um, you know, if you're taking power away from those people, then they kind of don't want it to succeed. So I think it's just a lot of people trying to get cheap Bitcoin right now. And it's, you know, in general, it's just, um, you know, holding on strong. I mean, I'm just holding on to my coins right now because I know it will eventually pass. Um, I don't know if it'll take another week, two weeks or what, but... Um, you know, I'm definitely confident that this is one of those shakeouts that we're having. And as more people come into the market and then more people are able to access cryptocurrencies, I mean, we're just going to see, you know, more flood of investors come in and we'll, you know, get back on that rally where we were at. So I think we're definitely um, still on the rise with cryptocurrencies and with Bitcoin. And, um, you know, it's definitely um, something to look forward to in the future as more adoption comes. But um, also in this article, it mentions that uh, next week, February 6th, uh, there's a Senate banking committee hearing on cryptocurrencies. It's titled Virtual Currencies, the Oversight Role of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. So um, this is also, you know, discussion in Congress that has some people, uh, you know, maybe nervous or just, you know, they don't know what's going to happen. So uh, you can see here on the banking.senate.gov website um, right here, it's, you know, the hearing is scheduled February 6th at 10 a.m. So again, you know, something to look forward to um, and just kind of, you know, see what they're going to say here and what kind of uh, things are going to come out of this. So hopefully it's positive and, um, you know, looking forward to see what they say about cryptocurrencies. But um, one last thing is, um, you know, ICOs have been a big thing recently. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, really um, just make y'all aware of, you know, there's a lot of scams in ICOs and especially a lot of people trying to impersonate either ICO um, you know, directors or CEOs or just, you know, send fake emails. So I noticed uh, with Daddy, this was a, a really popular ICO. 
Um, and they actually uh, recently there was um, some people that got a hold of their um, I guess their marketing emails uh, of everyone who invested or uh, everyone who signed up on their website and basically uh, the scammers sent out an email telling you there's a crowd sale second chance and to send your ETH here and all that and um, and then, you know, basically some whales got a hold of our public address in advance and bought most of the tokens. So we warned to give you regular users a second chance. So don't fall for this. You can see they tweeted it on their uh, Twitter. So just keep in mind, uh, there's always these scams going on with these ICOs. And if you get an email like this, you know, telling you to send ETH to an address or, you know, Ethereum or any coin, um, go, go to the company's Twitter or directly to their website to verify, you know, if that's legitimate or not, because... Um, it's just, you know, it's too risky right now to just sending your, uh, your coins anywhere. Um, especially if you're not sure if the email is real or not. So again, you know, always verify first, just don't blankly, you know, trust any email that you get. So I just wanted to bring that to some attention to people's attention. Cause I know a lot of people did invest in this ICO. So, but, uh, with that, I hope I ease some of your fears. Um, you know, again, it's just a lot of FUD being spread, but, um, you know, the consensus, I know Samsung is actually building a lot um, they're going to build some, uh, actually, I think, um, some specific miners uh, for cryptocurrency. So, you know, a lot of companies are getting in to the cryptocurrency space. And I think, you know, there's a lot of mass adoption coming on. So don't be scared by this temporary FUD going on. Just hold strong. You know, a couple months we're going to be looking back at this and laughing. And, um, yeah, I believe we'll definitely see a bounce coming soon. And just be prepared. We may see Bitcoin dip a little bit more to 7,500. So just be prepared with that. Um, but, uh, if not, then, you know, we'll continue our rally, uh, from here. So with that, um, if you like the video, please give it a like comment if you have any questions and subscribe if you haven't until next time. Thanks for watching.